five mistakes not to make when lighting your home. Hi, I'm Olivia. Welcome to my channel. I'm the founder and an interior designer at Olivia Kaplan Design. My channel is here to help you get the best from your home and give you tips, tricks and uh, general interiors related inspiration. Subscribe for more videos and if you like this one, please give us a thumbs up down below. So let's kick off with this week's video. Number one, and my biggest bugbear by a long way, although I'll probably say this for all of them, but this one definitely, definitely is my pet peeve with lighting. <clears throat> Spotlights. They're everywhere. So the, the biggest culprits generally are um, property developers or, uh, you know, renovations or constructions where they're sort of builder led rather than architect or designer led. And what happens is they generally just get a plan and they go one, two, three, four, done. That room's tick. One, two, three, four, bathroom, tick. And what you end up with is identical rooms with four or eight or however many <laughs> symmetrical grids of spotlights just plonked in the room. This serves nobody. And yes, there's an element of satisfying symmetry, but beyond that, they have no purpose. And actually what you find is rooms look very clinical and the, these lights, these spotlights have to have a purpose. They, they have to do a job. Now, look, I could do a whole video on spotlights probably, because as you can tell, it really winds me up. But when I'm looking at a job and when I'm looking at a room, a, a whole client's house, it doesn't really matter. The, the, the lighting plan is just as important as a furniture layout or the way the, the house flows. Because if you get the lighting wrong, you're stuck with it. You can't just go and replace the sofa. You know, it's, it's built into the house. So I would really urge you to think long and hard about lighting over a lot of the other stuff, which is much easier to undo if you get it wrong. So back to spotlights, make sure that every single one has a specific job. So for example, in your kitchen, they have a really important job, which is to light the surface that you're chopping on, to um, have angled spotlights that show, you know, the contents of your cupboards, or to have spotlights that run kind of the length of a walkway. You know, these areas, I mean, arguably you could put wall lights in that place. <laughs> you can see I really don't like them. Um, but but in your in your kind of functional spaces, that's where they need to be. However, and a big caveat to that is in the bathroom. Do not put a spotlight just in front of the sink. So it goes like that and it creates a horrible shadow. You get a really nice double chin, rubbish for putting on your makeup, pointless, pointless, pointless. And finally, absolutely do not put spotlights above your bed. Mm. Okay, I'll cheer up now. <laughs> so, um, number two, shadows. Think about where your shadows are going to be. So think about the light that casts and the sh or the, the light that comes down and the shadow that's cast as a result. Whether that might be you are the block and you your shadow is then cast into your space. So like I was talking about before in your kitchen, really important that when you're trying to chop that onion you're not your shadow is not covering that onion so again you need the angled lighting there to kind of bypass the human and um you know light the light the item that's being chopped um now shadows can be really decorative they can be purposeful they can be lovely and actually i would encourage you to to sort of think about the shadow just as much as as the light you know there is some sort of beauty in darkness and in kind of pockets of your home that are not starkly lit up. That's really important, but that's in your softer areas, your living spaces, you know, not your not your kitchens. So, and again, I, I mentioned shadows in terms of the bathroom. Be really careful about where and how you're lighting the area around your, your sink and your vanity area, particularly if you will be doing your makeup or you know you'll be doing kind of beauty products whatever in your bathroom it's really important that you get an even spread of light that's cast onto your face another example actually of shadows that can be great and also quite 
tricky is um, on the stairs. So people often put little um, LED spots pointing into the stairs. And that's that's great. It gives a really lovely um, gives a really lovely sort of finish and look to it, and it can give a really polished effect. But just be very careful where you put them because you need to be lighting the right parts and leaving the shadow, you know, on the the riser. But obviously, if that's too extreme, then coming down is fine because you see where you put your foot. But going up can be a little bit um, discombobulating. So again, just be mindful of the placement of all your lighting and and the shadows that. That come off from them. Number three is dimmer switches. Just put them in, please. Um, I don't know what the kind of hang up is from people here, and I think it's probably a cost thing. You know, by the time you get to that part of the job or the build, you feel like you're a cash point and you are just being continually asked to spend more and more and more and more and it's probably at this point where you just go do you know what let's get a cheap and cheerful boring switch but it will be so so much better if you can have a dimmer switch put on particularly if you've got lots of different circuits going on you don't want the same light during the day i mean you don't often need your lights on during the day if you've got a nice bright house but if you've got a london townhouse and you've got a middle um, living space without direct windows you're going to need the lights on in the day but those lights are going to be quite different during the day to the evening now I would argue with spotlights that you bin them in the evening and you use your more kind of atmospheric lighting like your lamps and your wall lights but if you don't have those things then put a dimmer switch on your spots make sure you've got dimmable bulbs and dim them and instantly you create a nicer atmosphere without having to spend very much money at all and if you're at the beginning of the process and if you're you know um, renovating a house just absolutely 100% make sure you put these in while I'm talking about um, circuits and systems you know you don't need to have a really kind of bells and whistles fancy complex lighting system but you do just need to make sure that your zones in your house are controllable different you know separately to one another it's also much more environmentally friendly if you can just turn on the lights that you need rather than just ground floor because that sounds kind of extreme but in again a kind of london townhouse you 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 know it may all be one connected space so it may not you may not twig that actually you do need to to section that off if you can number four is light sources and by that i mean having different and multiple light sources per space a bathroom again is the perfect example you need your your kind of work function lighting which might in the bathroom's case be one overhead pendant that sort of spreads the light um, evenly just to create light in the room but again if you've got a very bright room you might not need to do this you may then have some wall lights which give the nice kind of glow onto your face um, I would I would avoid spotlights in a bathroom if you can because again as I say they just don't create very nice a very nice effect. Um, I, and, and then in that same bathroom, maybe think about having some LED lighting or some um, kind of strip lighting in a niche, whether that's you know above your bath or in your shower, somewhere to put your your bottles, your shampoo, and everything like that. And it just creates again a little decorative um, bit of interest and have all these on separate circuits so that in the middle of the night when you have a 3am wee you can turn on the niche light and it's just a tiny little glow that you know you don't do that when you walk into the bathroom but you can see where you're going so make sure when you're designing your lighting you have multiple different sources of light that will act together to light your space rather than plonking spotlights in and going tick great off we go and number five is colour. Um, I don't mean disco ball, <laughs> red, white, green colour. I mean warmth or coolness of your of your lighting. So in other words, the Kelvin. Now, let me just read this right. <laughs> this is the standard international unit of thermodynamic temperature. Yeah, um, it, but it's really useful. So 
warm white is thrown around far more than it should be and I think a lot of the mass produced lighting that you find on the market is tagged warm white. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. So warm white, technically speaking, on the Kelvin scale is 2700 Kelvin. Now I'll put a little nerdy uh, diagram up here to show you what I mean. Um, but it's an incredibly useful way of determining the warmth or coolness of any lighting. So unless you're designing a chemistry lab, do not go higher than 2700 Kelvin because it will feel very clinical, very cold and just horrible. If you are if you are lighting your home, it must be warmer than 2000, 2700 or warmer, basically. And it's worth noting that, you know, it's very, very obvious in a house when certain areas are different warmth than others. You can get away with cooler, cooler lighting, no cooler than 2700 in your kitchen because it's it is a slightly more clinical space, particularly if you've got, you know, some white marble or, you know, paler um, cabinetry. It's, it lends itself better. Hard flooring, etc. lends itself better to cooler light. So that's fine. But if you've got multiple living spaces or bedrooms that are sort of interconnected, um, keep them the same, keep this, the lighting the same colour, keep it all uniform, because otherwise one bulb will stick out like a sore thumb. There's just one final point to make here. Um, with, you know, reading lights, very specific thin little reading lights, they're exempt. <laughs> And I know that certain people of a certain age maybe need specific reading lights. They have a very specific purpose and they can be switched off. <laughs> so that's probably the only time I would throw out the rule book in terms of the, the Kelvin. They will be very bright. Now, there is a huge amount to say on lighting and I could probably go on and on and on. And I, and I will definitely do another video or multiple videos on um, specific lighting topics. But I hope those five tips were helpful and hopefully will stop you making um, the same mistakes as I see all the time. So if you like this video, please do subscribe and um, give me a thumbs up below. I'd be really appreciative. And it means hopefully I can bring you more videos like this on a weekly basis. Also come and follow me along on Instagram too. I would love to see you there. Thank you so much. See you soon. Bye.